Good day everyone, this is Chris with The Ancient Scholar. Uh, so I'm making this video in response to a question that I was asked uh, on an on online forum uh, for EMS professionals. And this uh, relates to the heating of an IV solution in a microwave and uh, the, the, the safety of that. I, I believe the question uh, was more on the lines of uh, can, um, can materials from the IV ba the bag that actually contains the the crystalloid solution, or I'll assume that we're talking about uh, an isotonic crystalloid. Can that bag perhaps um, uh, degrade and release uh, certain toxins into the IV solution? And uh, I'll just go ahead and tell the give you guys the answer right now. And and, and the answer uh, really at this point is uh, we don't really have a great idea. Uh, uh, of um, what kinds of toxins may or may not be released. Uh, there, there's actually a fair amount of literature on this, and if you look at the literature, it, it's um, it's not really clear that um, there are toxins released uh, in IV fluids uh, that are heated via microwave. Uh, what is apparent, however, is the fact that um, there there are difficulties in um, getting to a target temperature of IV fluid. Um, uh, specifically, we can, uh, the, the risk for overheating that fluid is, is very high. Um, clearly, that could be uh, you know, catastrophic if we gave something that was very uh, too hot to a patient. Uh, and uh, that's probably where my biggest safety concern would be, is not necessarily toxins being released because the literature isn't really all that clear on toxins, and you know I don't I don't I haven't seen any smoking gun literature, uh, but certainly um, when we talk about you know how do we reliably um, heat IV fluid, um, there can be some issues there, and really um, your best bet is to get a commercial um, IV warmer that's set at a very specific temperature and you know has controls run and, and you know it's it's um, designed for the purpose of heating IV fluids and keep your fluids in this IV warmer um, because it keeps them at a constant uh, body temperature um, so that would be the safest bet and that's not necessarily because I, I um, think of, uh, that I'm worried about toxins leaking out of the the, um, the, the plastic or PVC type material that's um, that the bag is made of, but more um, that you know uh, definitively that the the fluid is at a safe temperature. Okay, so now we got that over with. Let's just because um, there's actually a lot of confusion, I think, about how microwaves work. Uh, so, so first of all, uh, when we talk about how microwave works, we need to recognize what a microwave is. Uh, so, a microwave, microwave, is is actually when we look at microwave, it's actually a type of light. Okay, it's a type of light. Um, and it is uh, on the electromagnetic spectrum. It is, uh, microwave, um, of course, is, is a, is a um, electro, electromagnetic wave. Okay, and it's just like uh, any other wave or particle of light, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and if you look at the, the spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum of light, and let's just go ahead and look at this real quick. Um, on one end of the spectrum, uh, we'll say over here, I have very what we call red light. And then on the other end, I have where it's called very blue light. And then more or less in the middle, um, we have what's called visible light. And that's the kind of light that we can see with our, our naked eyes, with our unaided eye. And um, as I move toward the what we call the bluer wavelengths of light, um, the wavelength becomes smaller. Okay, so I have a smaller wavelength. Um, generally, this type of light will have higher energy, so I have an increase in my energy. Um, these include things like X-rays. Um, so I'll just draw an arrow over here. So X-rays, uh, gamma rays. Okay, gamma rays, all very high energy types of forms of light, or photons. Um, when we look at uh, the red wavelengths, um, light that is more red, I'll have a decrease in the amount of energy, and I'll have larger, I'll have 
have larger wavelengths. And these include things like radio waves, radio waves, and microwaves, microwaves. Okay, um, so that's actually where microwaves are. They're over there on the low energy um, side of what's known as the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so microwave is just nothing more but a wave uh, type of light. Uh, just like the light um, from the computer screen that's hitting your eyes. Um, the, the light that you can actually see, of course, is, is, is a form of what we, you know, we say visible light. Microwaves are going to have a very, uh, we're going to have a much larger uh, wavelength. Um, and just to refresh you on what wavelength is, if you look at um, a wave as it propagates, um, and I have I have these peaks here, I have these troughs. If I were to measure from the tip of a peak, the tip of a peak, or from a trough to a trough like that, whatever this distance d is, um, we would call the wavelength. And of course, I'd need you know this this would need to be oscill oscillating and moving you know many 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 times um, for it to be a true wave. Um, now, light generally is um, very, very tiny wavelengths. We're talking, you know, micrometers, um, very tiny uh, wavelengths indeed. But the the shorter the wavelength, so maybe I'll have light like this, you know, very short wavelengths, lots of energy. Very long wavelengths, I'm going to have lower energy light. Um, so this would be blue over here, and this would be red down here. Okay, so fair enough. All right. Um, now that's not the entire story, okay? Um, because light, when a a light, um, you know, when I have um, a light propagating, you know, I really have um, uh, when this radiation is moving out, um, I really have uh, two components. I have an electro. I have an electro component, and I have a magnetic component. Okay, and I have a magnetic component. Um, so if I were to take something, let's say an electron, for example, which has a negative charge, and I were to move um, that electron, of course the uh, electron would uh, would give off energy, and um, I could. That's actually where I get my radio waves. And um, if this moves with high enough energy and it smashes into something, I can even get really high energy forms of light being released, such as X-rays. Um, there are really two components uh, when when I have a the electro when I have a propagation of elect uh, of the um, of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, I have you know I can have an electrical component uh, which kind of moves like this. Okay, say this is electrical wave, and then I can also have a magnetic component. Um, and so if I have uh, up and down orientation. Of uh, let's say an electrical field, my electrical field is moving up and down um, perpendicular to that. So if you can imagine kind of popping out of the screen at you, and then going behind the screen, and coming out at the screen and going behind the screen, exactly perpendicular um, to this electrical uh, this electrical propagation, um, I'll have a magnetic propagation. Okay, so uh, anytime I have an electrical, the electrical field propagating, I'll have a magnetic field as well. They're one and the same, um, and they're always perpendicular, perpendicular to each other. So um, it's really one and the same in the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, well, fair enough, fair enough. Let's talk about how microwaves work now, um, because that's kind of what I wanted to get to. And to understand that, let's look at a very common molecule. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the um, water molecule, which is um, H2O. Um, and generally you'll see it depicted like this. I have an oxygen, and then I have two hydrogens uh, covalently bound to the oxygen. Okay, fair enough. Well, we know that the oxygen, uh, let's draw that in blue, actually. Make the oxygen blue. Okay, so I have the oxygen here. Um, we know that the oxygen is very electronegative. Okay, it's highly electronegative, and I have my hydrogens here. Um, and because it's very electronegative, it attracts um, electrons to itself 
Um, and when I have it bound uh, covalently to an atom that is not as electronegative, such as hydrogen, the oxygen, and we'll, we'll, we'll just, our, maybe our electron will be black, the oxygen is going to pull on the electron in that hydrogen, and that electron is going to spend more time it's, 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 it's probability density will spend more time around the oxygen and oxygen will actually kind of take on a partial, we call a partial negative charge because the, electron is spend, the electrons are spending more of their time near the oxygen and the hydrogens will kind of take on partial positive charges okay, um, because the electrons are kind of being pulled away from the, the hydrogens. Um, and what this creates is something known as a polar, a polar molecule. Okay, a polar molecule. That is to say that um, one side of the molecule kind of has a, more or less a positive charge, and the other side of the molecule has more or less a negative charge, or what we call partial, or delta charge. Now, this is very important because if, if I take a polar molecule, and let's now say that we have a microwave um, and let's draw um, the microwave oscillating um, you know it's a wave of wave of light so the microwave is going to be oscillating kind of like this we'll say okay and um, I have a positive here and this is negative this is positive this is um, negative positive negative positive negative okay um, it's oscillating. Uh, I think uh, microwaves can be, you know, a couple billion, uh, billion times um, a second. You know, it oscillates very, very rapidly. And then I were to take an oxy uh, water molecule. Okay, so uh, let's say that I have my oxygen here, and I have my hydrogens here. Okay, now we know that the oxygen has a partial positive charge or, excuse me, a partial negative charge and the hydrogen is a partial positive. So if you put this microwave that's oscillating um, and changing sign back and forth, positive, negative, positive, negative, very quickly, and I were to put a water molecule next to it, the as the water molecule um, interacts with this wave, um, with this oscillation of the field, um, the positive part of this atom will be attracted to the negative over here and the negative part will be attracted to the positive positive. and so what will happen is this water molecule will move and it will realign itself um, to that orientation to where the oxygens are more attracted to the negative uh, or the hydrogens are more attracted to the negative the oxygens are more attracted to the positive but because this field is moving and it's oscillating very quickly um, the uh, what we call the moment, um, the moment that the dipole moment on the the mo molecule water is going to be changing because it's going to constantly be moving around and around and around trying to align itself um, with the positive and negative um, of this field that's oscillating. Uh, as it does that, the water molecule will literally move and it'll pick up kinetic energy. It'll have more kinetic energy, it's going to have more potential energy and what, 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 what happens when the kinetic or the average kinetic energy of, of anything changes if I, have, if I were to have you know, lots of water molecules here, they're all moving, their average kinetic energy increases, well their temperature will increase and they're going to have lots of energy in the form of heat. Um, and they're gonna they're gonna get hot. They're gonna warm up. They're gonna move faster. Their kinetic energy is gonna increase. They're gonna get hotter, and that is what happens in a microwave oven. You know, I put my food in there. Um, the water, of course, um, water being a polar molecule, is gonna be affected uh, more strongly. Uh, to a lesser extent, fats um, and carbohydrates inside of foods will also be affected, um, but they're not as polar as water. Um, there are um, hydroxyl uh, hydroxyl bonds or hydroxyl groups um, hydroxyl groups um, attached. If you, you imagine you have kind of your carbon chain here and your hydroxyl groups, and you know this is maybe the chain of a fat. We know that these hydroxyl groups here, um, 
just draw a line to them. These guys here are actually fairly polar. Um, bonds are occurring there. Um, so this part of those molecules, uh, be it a, a, a fat or a carbohydrate, will actually be affected. Um, but not nearly as much as um, a water molecule is. Okay, so that's how I actually get things to heat up um, in a microwave oven. Um, it's a little, probably a little more complicated than that, but, but hopefully, um, hopefully at least you qualitatively have an understanding of what's going on. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.